All right, I'm here with Kavul Ahmad, and Kavul, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks. Um, I'm uh, Kavul, or Kav for short. Um, it was a bit of a Japan thing. My, my name was permanently shortened to Kav when I arrived here. <laughs> Um, I'm originally from Scotland and I've been in Japan for just a little over four years now. Um, I arrived here about uh, July 2014 and um, I came here without a job. So I came here on a tourist visa, um, but when I came here I, I wanted to find work um, and um, I didn't really know uh, what I was going to, whether I would stay or what kind of job I would find. Um, and then just by chance I met the co-founder of a travel startup and uh, they had um, just been funded and they were looking for a native English speaker to come and do some content work for them. So then um, they sorted my visa out for me but I had to leave the country and then come back. Um, so after that I had, I was there for like two years at this travel startup and then after that I had about a couple of months off trying to figure out what it was I was going to do um, and then um, I started working freelance as well within that time so just like helping small businesses do um, like their SEO work and Facebook ads and Google ads and things like that right. and also did a bit of content writing too. Um, now I work um, part time as a incubation and marketing manager for Rios and Park which is a co-working space in the Otsuka area of Tokyo. And I also still do a bit of content work for some other websites and publications and stuff. Um, but my passion and what I do kind of on the side and in my spare time is that I run a small stationery business. So um, I started like a Japanese stationery subscription box. Um, and uh, yeah, just working on that. So well, Great. Wow. It sounds like you have your hands full with with many yeah. things to do that's that's good though you know uh so you said you moved to japan in 2014 right that's right yeah. yeah so what was your initial interest in japan what what drew you to come to japan especially just uh, was it on a whim you know you said you came in on a tourist visa right yeah yeah so i had planned to come here um so i've got a friend who lives here and She's also Scottish and she's been here for about 15 years and she's married to a Japanese guy and she lives very close to me and um, she, I came here 10 years ago in 2008 for a holiday to visit her and um, even then I kind of had a little bit of an interest or a bit of intrigue about Japan and that was through um, Murakami Haruki's books, yeah. you know, the guy that wrote Wine of Bird Chronicle. So reading his books, I kind of had this notion that I wanted to visit Japan and then she moved to Tokyo and I thought, oh, well, well that's great. That was perfect. So yeah, 10 years ago, I came here on holiday. I was here for three weeks and I loved it, but I never had any thought that I would, I never thought at the time that I would be living here, but I always had this hankering to live overseas from, for, from a long time, actually, from when I, since I was like 18, 17, 18, but I just, I guess I never really did anything about it. I never made the move and something always came up and I don't know, work and things like that. Right. I didn't really think too much about it. And then um, about five, a little over five years ago, or maybe just, just a bit before that, um, I uh, the, the job that I had in Scotland, um, I was working for Scotland's tourist board um, and I was a marketing manager for them. I was there for five years and they were um, going through a spate of kind of like voluntary redundancies. Um, do you know what that is? Like, um, I don't know what you call it in America. It's like- uh, we, we, we call redundancies layoffs. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah that's it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I watched you... enough of uh, British British TV <laughs> shows to figure out what a redundancy was. So, yeah. Oh, that's good, so you're- uh, Thank you, The uh, Office, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, that kind of like even before they announced that I kind of thought you know what I'm gonna go live overseas this is like if I don't do it now then I'm never going to go and I had this notion that maybe I'll go live in like Australia or like Brazil and I even had planned out where in Brazil I was going to live I was going to live on an island and teach English or something and I was just gonna live like an easy life wow, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, 
yeah and then the, the the job that I had before they announced these redundancies and you know if you've been there for a while I've been there for five years you get like a, a little package and you could kind of set yourself up to do some whatever it is you want to do next and at that point I thought okay this is it I'm definitely going to go somewhere so I was speaking to my friend here the one that lives here um, I was speaking to her about it and she just said to me why don't you just come here so Earlier in the year, she had got married to Nori, her husband, and they got married in Scotland. So I'd met him and I'd met his family. So I kind of thought to myself, and she, she explained the family business and their family business is property. So she said to me, if you come here, I can help you because we have property here and you can stay close to me and all this kind of stuff and we can help you find a job and um, figure out you know something for you and I just thought that sounded great I thought well I've been to Japan before I like Haruki Murakami so uh, and my pal from home lives just down the road so that'll be great I'll do that so I just got this one-way ticket and I had never done like you know all, everyone this like these days are doing like gap years and things like that I'd never done things like that before so I'd never been to Southeast Asia so I did this trip where I was like going kind of across Southeast Asia and Japan would be my last stop so um, that's what I did. I came here and then um, just felt like I've been on a big holiday ever since. <laughs> wow, yeah. So just uh, enjoying enjoying the good life here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what, how, describe your first few months coming here on a, um, on a tourist visa because mm -hmm. for one, how long can you legally stay in the country on that visa and what did you have to like settle for any sort of work in the beginning or did you have something in mind that you wanted to do when you got here um i um so first of all i have to say you're not supposed to it's illegal to look for work when you're on a tourist visa in japan so i didn't right. actually outwardly promote myself or, or do anything i was just my first month here i was just literally just on holiday rediscovering all the areas that I went to 10 years ago that kind of thing right of course and, of course and um, um, just by chance um, and then I, I assumed that I would actually try uh, I would at some point just teach English here because that's what everybody does so right. I kind of made plans to I could stay here legally for three months as on a tourist visa so I thought well maybe I'll go somewhere else I'm in Asia there are other parts of Asia I want to see I'll go somewhere else and I'll go back to traveling for a couple of months and then I'll look for a job here while I'm overseas and then I'll come back or something like that right but what happened was while I was here and in my first month in fact probably in the first three weeks I happened to meet by chance the co-founder of a startup, a travel startup, and they um, they had just been funded, so they had just been given uh, a ton of money uh, to to uh, uh, build content, and they needed a native English speaker. And I had just left my job at the tourist board in marketing, and they were a travel site looking for somebody to do some marketing work for them. So it just it was just pure luck, pure luck. Yeah, it, it seems like that opportunity yeah. just sort of fell into your lap then. Yeah. Exactly, right. exactly. Right. And then, so then I um, I left, I went to Malaysia um, and I stayed there uh, for about maybe four weeks or so um, around Asia and then um, in that time they sorted out my visa for me and my visa application and all this stuff and then I came back a couple of months later. So by the time I came back it was so I arrived here July, and then by the time I came back, it would have been around end of September. All right. Yeah, beginning of October. So, and then I didn't start work until the beginning of October. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you you did everything the right way then, you know. So that's a uh, a good good advice for for people to know yeah. to to not come to Japan on a tourist visa actively looking for work. So. That's yeah. um, that's that's helpful information actually. Thank you. Um, but you you got the you got the job at the uh, the travel startup and gotcha. that just seems to fit right into what you were doing before. You know, so it, exactly. It, yeah. I I couldn't I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was just um, it was just pure chance. And the thing about it was is that they were very um, 
they were a travel startup was at very very early stages so they had like hardly any content on their website so when I arrived here it was like the perfect opportunity to go out and explore all these different places and that's what they wanted me to do for my job so it sounds like a dream job really you know <laughs> yeah yeah and also um because they were trying to like you know we were trying to find our feet at the time I, I think I was like employee number five or six at the time wow so um it was very early stage and then um because they were trying to find their feet they were going to they were arranging all these like networking events for us to go to and and I, I say us it was actually just me and maybe one other person so I ended up um going out to all these events like um like networking things which I'm not too keen on <laughs> but because I was still so new here and I was in a new country and it was just like it was actually very exciting and it kind of brought out me out my shell a little bit so I basically had to talk to strangers and um, that was something that was quite new but um, I realized how uh, uh, different it felt here um, because yeah I just I don't know I just kind of got a bit more confident in like meeting new people and things like that and I, I guess I was still on a bit of a high from arriving somewhere new so yeah so that was a good opportunity so I met a lot of people in those first few months just for, for the job yeah yeah it, it sounds like um, you I mean that's just that's great you you were able to network and just meet lots of people yeah. from the get-go from the get-go that's right. Yeah. And also my friend who the one that I talked about who who lives here for, and has been here for a while because she put me in one of the, her like families her husband's family's like properties um it's actually a share it's like a it's a luxury share house mm -hmm. share office and so when I arrived here um I already had kind of like ready-made friends in a sense because yeah. I'd met some people at their wedding a few years earlier so there was a bit of familiarity already with some people well that's cool that's cool so yeah. um yeah I, I've talked to people and myself as well um I j these people and myself we just came into Japan without knowing anybody but you you actually did know some you had some connections uh, when yeah. you came here um, which is uh, a good advantage really for uh, for that um, but you um, you you live you said in in like a, a share house a luxury share house so you yeah kind of explain what that is um, because yeah. these I, what I at least where I'm from those sorts of establishments aren't really common so what what, what exactly is that so so um so it the the share house so it's actually called it's called rios and park which mm -hmm. is the same place where i work at now part-time because they also own shared offices as well okay um, and um rios and park is run by my friend rachel and her husband nori and it's like a i, I think the best way to describe it is like it's like a posh dorm okay yeah. so and it's like a six story um six story kind of apartment block or big massive building um, and it's got um, there's like 41 residents here which sounds like a lot but um, because the space is so big the ceilings are so high um, the common spaces are huge and um, it kind of doesn't really feel like there's 41 people here at all sometimes it's deadly quiet there could be nobody here sometimes right. and um, uh, the, the kitchen and the living space is enormous and um, I think the most people the most number of people I've ever seen in there is probably about 20 or 30 at the most and that's not all residents that's people who are bringing their friends over as well and having like a little party or something so. right right and yeah. um, how would you describe your experience with that you said you you know you, you haven't really met the full you know the full uh, capacity of, of the people there um, but as opposed to living in like a normal apartment complex, would you say it's uh, better, worse, or pretty much the same? Um, I think so. I've uh, it's been a long time since I've ever shared spaces with other people, and the last time was back home when I was young at university. Right. Um, apart, from that, I've always either lived myself or with like a partner. Um, but um, I think again, like the novelty of being somewhere new and. I say novelty, but actually, it's it helped a lot to be here in some in an environment like this, because um, 
even though you don't speak to everybody, there's something nice about knowing that there's other people close by and around you. Right. And I quite like that. Um, it's um, it's not. I don't think this kind of living is for everybody. Um, but I I really enjoy, I really enjoy it. So I um, there's like three floors that are um, shared. Um, I'm just to give you a sense of the space. Like one of the floors that I used to live on. Um, has like three three shower rooms and three bathrooms that kind of thing so right. it's like there's about 12 people or something and they all kind of have different schedules so you, you share those facilities um, and um, and there's like cl there's housekeepers that come in five days a week as well so there's never really that kind of argumentative streak that you would probably have back home where oh you've not done your share of the cleaning or this and that it's very kind of it's a very smooth running ship here wow yeah that's that, that actually sounds quite nice uh, yeah. i wish i had some housekeepers to come by you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely and then um that was yeah, that was two years ago and then since then i still live in the share house but at the top floor of the share house they have like two semi-private apartments and so i live in one of the apartments now okay. so i kind of feel like i have more of my own space right so. right well that's cool that's cool yeah. um now um where exactly again in Tokyo is that and what in what relation is that to like um, the more more well-known er areas that people frequent mm -hmm. yeah so I live in Sugamo and uh, the share house is in Sugamo and um, that's on the Yamanote line and it's like um, uh, five minutes from Ikebukuro station and maybe like I think it's 12 minutes to Shinjuku and 20 minutes to Shibuya wow so it's no problem to to get to where um, a lot of people need to go, right? So, That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So, you're, yeah. Let's let's take it back to your first um, after after you've secured your job and you're in Japan. You're living here. You're working here. Um, how was it living in Japan? Your first few months living in Japan, as opposed to just being a a, a tourist or vacationing here. Yeah. I um, um, I, do you know I really struggled with culture shock, mm -hmm. and I was really surprised at that because I had everything handed to me. You know, I didn't have any reason to kind of struggle, but I think um, around the big end of November to the beginning of January, I uh, my my first few weeks um, when I came back and I, I was working were were were, were great. But I think the high wore off for, you know, a kind of like, yeah, definitely that feeling of coming down off the something. The honeymoon phase <laughs> ended, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, and I don't know, I found it, I, I don't think it was so much the language thing, although I could hardly speak, I mean, it's not much better, but I can speak, I can definitely get by now and I can speak Japanese a, a bit. Um, but it was, it was kind of... Um, non-existent at the start I I felt like um, I don't know I felt like um, very tired all the time from working <laughs> all yeah. the time as well mm -hmm. I think it was a mixture of that and also just um, adjusting to like somewhere completely new and um, and I think as well around December time um, like I'm not a huge in fact I don't really care so much for Christmas but I really like Christmas activities so right. you know back just home just that holiday I, sort of see, feeling right yeah, yeah. And, and being back home in December is like you know you see a lot of your friends at that time of year you've always got like nights out Christmas nights out, work nights out, this kind of thing and there was none of that here at all which mm. I, I guess I was not that I was surprised by it I'd heard of it um, but it was it was a bit of a, a uh, a change it was like um, I felt very unsocial in December and that made me a bit sad <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's definitely you don't feel the same sort of um, magic I guess if that's that's not really the the right word but you, I think you know what I mean the same sort of just yeah. feeling in the air that um, exactly. let's exactly. say Western countries have around that that time of the year yeah. um, Japan yeah tries to to at least put you know some illuminations and you know some lights and decorations up but right. you're right the social aspect is not really there and it save for christmas day which is more of like couples or you know or something of, of a holiday like that um 
it's it, you know you don't really feel that sort of atmosphere here you're right exactly yeah. and um, um at that time as well my friend who was here she went back to scotland so i was um yeah i just felt i felt quite a, i felt alone i felt really by my by myself and i was uh just a bit kind of like um have i done the right thing mm -hmm. um but I have to We've say all that been that, there, I, I believe. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. I have to say, I mean, that feeling, I guess, lasted just a, about a month. And by the time the new year came, I remember actually what happened was New Year's, the day before New Year's Eve, a friend um, who I'd met at their, my friend's wedding, um, got in touch to say, by the way, I'm here. Um, I don't know what you're doing for New Year, but I've got no plans. And I was like, oh my gosh, neither have I. And so the two of us hung out and I remember being really happy she'd been here a couple of years so we went out and you know she introduced me to some new places and it, we just had a lot of fun we ended up in karaoke till like three or four in the morning yeah, and yeah. On the first of January and I just really liked it I just really thought oh this is cool this is going back to liking it now <laughs> yeah and then yeah and then after that I remember just feeling so much better and had a great year <laughs> well, that, that's hey that's a that's a perfect way to start off a year you know I mean that what what a what a great way to to set the tone right mm, so yeah. um now in in your share share house um yeah. the residents are they they're mostly japanese or is there like a, a mix of, of foreign and japanese or um i would say it's 95 98 percent japanese wow okay. and, and there's um out of all of us i think there is um there's five there's five non-Japanese here, okay. Okay. including myself. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just. I wasn't aware of the the demographics, and because yeah. I've heard of, like, share houses that are mostly gaijin, or yeah. mostly foreign, yeah. you know, and then some that are that are not. So, did now? Yeah. Do you find that was helpful in your development of learning Japanese, or or not? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. I mean, I haven't ever taken any formal classes or lessons um, mm -hmm. because I, um, well, I just didn't have the time. My first two years, I was working for the startup, and it was all hands on deck. So I was literally just working all, all the time. Right. Um, didn't have time for classes, so I had to learn um, uh, just by uh, attempting to chat with my <laughs> housemates. Um, yeah. The good thing, well, I don't know if it's a good thing. It's not a good thing for learning Japanese, but um, everybody who lives here has some kind of loose connection to the owner, to Rachel's husband, and um, at least that was the case when I first moved here. And um, so, the majority of people that come here, the majority of Japanese people that come to live in this kind of place, is are people who have lived overseas at some point. So they've studied abroad or they've lived overseas, and they don't want to just come back and live on their own. And they kind of want that feeling of they had when they were overseas so when they um so so they all kind of speak a relatively good level of, of english and i feel like i've been quite spoiled that way right. but on the on the on the downside of that is that they pr want to practice their english with me and i want them to i want to speak japanese with them so <laughs> yes that is the um that is the <laughs> conundrum of of yeah. every japanese learner and and uh, English learner, if they're if they're Japanese, is wh which side gets to win in yeah. wh this round? You know, like are we are we doing Japanese day? Are we doing English? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. But early, earlier this year, my birthday, I made them all promise. We had like a little kind of little come by celebration, and um, they uh, I said to them all that my one thing for this year was is that unless I'm like at death's door, you've got to speak to me in Japanese because I can't I can't keep going on like this. So that's worked a lot. So I feel like my Japanese level has increased this year because I've mm. been I've been forced into it with all the guys here. So right, right. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like a a forced sink or swim sort of scenario, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it's really how 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 you learn, you know. So that's good. Mm. Now you said you've you've done you do a little bit of freelancing. Yeah. And as well as you have your own side business so what got you into freelancing um well i had been at the startup for a couple of years and then they were 
focusing. So their main focus at the beginning was focusing on the English speaking market. And then they um, decided that they were going to change that and work towards more um, the Chinese speaking market. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been there a couple of years and there was kind of nothing else left for me to do there. So um, I took a couple of months off to kind of think about what it was I wanted to do. And in that time, um, um, Riosen Park, um, Nori and Rachel's company, they were looking for some help with some of their um, digital marketing. Um, right. There, they wanted to focus more on. Um, they've been currently been doing a lot of adwords and things like that in Japanese, but they wanted to do like the equivalent in English as well. So okay. uh, I started working for them, and um, that was. Um, just a few hours a week so on top of that I thought well this is quite good because if I can try and pick up on a, another couple of people that want the same thing then that would actually be quite good until I actually decide what it is I want to do right. um, and then um, just by chance um, I ended up picking up another couple of clients um, and doing exactly that <laughs> well hey you so, know that's a it's a nice little road that that opened up for you there you know so yeah, and yeah. and you still do that to this day correct I do that to this day yeah but now Rios and Park have hired me uh, as an employee so I work for them and they they sponsor like my visa and everything and um I, I do most of my work for them and then I just do like maybe uh, uh 10 15 hours for uh, other people other clients right right yeah that's well, right well that's good that's good it, there's a little bit of um of freedom in that you know that exactly. uh, you can you know adjust your own own schedule that way now yeah. you said you had a your own side business yeah so okay. um, yeah yeah I um, started off um, so in that time where I had this couple of months where I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do I remember um, sitting with um, you know pen and paper and just thinking oh like I need to be able to I want to be able to try and brainstorm myself something I've never done before in my life and I thought you know how do people work how do people get to work in things that they love to do like how does it how does it happen and um, I wondered I thought to myself well I you know I'm not a particularly creative person but I love creative creativity and other people I love art and I just kind of thought about how um, how I could do something with that and um, I have a friend in the UK who has um, whose partner has a subscription box and she does like a monthly subscription box selling um, like kind of crafts and to to people and um, and I remember thinking and at this point I had been collect I've been collecting stationery and it's been a hobby of mine since I was young I've just always loved it and Japan has really high quality amazing stationery and I remember thinking all of these kind of things coming together I thought well um, for gifts when I send things back home to people I always send them like a little bit of stationery or something um, something that's very Japanese and then all of that coming together I remember thinking why don't I do a subscription box um, or a box of some kind with some things in it and try and see if anyone would be interested in that right and, um, so now I can't uh, sorry. sorry, sorry to interrupt. Is your your market global or English speaking only, or is it aimed at a Japanese audience, or what? It's all global and it's English speaking audience. Okay. Okay. For now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I uh, made. I, I kind of bought everything from Tokyo Hands, and I bought like ten of everything, and then I made up these boxes. And then I made a website. This is all in my spare time. So I made a website and then I thought, um, I'll just see what happens with this. And then the 10 boxes sold out and then I got really good feedback. Um, and then I thought, okay, maybe I can do something with it with this. So I kind of let it sit for a couple of months. Um, and um, at this point I decided to look into, you know, how to start a business here in Japan and it's really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely need to have like a, you need, you need to have like a high level of, or, or a pretty competent level of Japanese that I don't think that was probably, it's not my level, but I'm fortunate that I've got friends who can help me. Um, 
so kind of looked into it and the business manager visa I don't know if you know this but it's like you have to have like 5 million yen to start off with and then you know it's a really expensive and, and even a long process um, so I decided to kind of look into um, how I could start the business in the UK because all my money wasn't coming here it was all in the UK because I couldn't I couldn't even figure out how to open PayPal in Japan it took me a while to, to sort that out to link it to my Japanese bank account it took right Pay, <laughs> PayPal Japan I've, I've heard so many yeah. issues with that with that but uh, yeah so it's you you've experienced the nightmare as well haven't you <laughs> yeah exactly so so that's why I decided to you know with those 10 boxes I just linked it to my UK bank account because it was so easy right um, and then um, I thought if I'm going to take this seriously and do something with it, I'm going to need to register a business. So I ended up registering a business in the UK. And as long as you don't have any kind of financial gain or transaction here in Japan, then you don't need to, um, you know, you don't have to kind of, uh, it's not the same as starting your business here. So right. it was actually a lot easier for me to do it that way. Um, That's a benefit of a of a global society, you know, the internet really, you know, exactly. So, yeah. exactly. so then I started creating more boxes. So, um, I've been doing it, I do it every three, every quarter. So every three months and, um, it's, I'm now at, uh, about a hundred subscribers now. So I started wow. off with 10, I'm now at about a hundred and it's, it's great. Um, it's, uh, I definitely don't give it as much focus as I should and as I, I could, but, um, I have to balance, paid work versus what I want to do yeah. and um, after after my like so subsequent boxes what I've actually done is like um, I partner up with or, or I collaborate with a Japan based artist or designer to create like one off pieces or mm. something that they perhaps already have made and I, I buy stock from them and then we kind of like uh, collaborate on a theme for the box which is based around this artist or designer so for example my, my um, the one that I had over the summer is with a designer called Misato she does like these kind of graphic prints so we created some postcards and some washi tape which is like the Japanese masking tape mm -hmm. and then um, um, and then around that I picked a few other pieces so like there's this pen that you can only buy in Asia and the pen is really good for writing on the type of card the kind of um, textured card that her postcards were made on and then there are other bits and pieces in the box and they all kind of are related to one another I've chosen them for a particular reason and they're all kind of based around Misato's work or her designs or that kind of thing okay. so it's a okay. curated box wow and, that's that's pretty cool yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the, the idea behind it is to have like, not necessarily all the kind of cute kawaii stuff because that's not really my, my style. But, right, you know, right. <laughs> I, I know that some people like that, so I try and I, I do try and stay away from that. But I do get lots of requests for it as well, so I can't I can't deny it. So I hope to do well, stuff with that later. But yeah. Yeah, it kind of makes you think um, how much how much more money can you get catering to <laughs> to the to the more mainstream fan, right? But no, I, I think that's awesome that you've been able to take something that you you love and just create a business out of it. You know, like get you you, you gain money from that, and you're you're able to do that while still maintaining a a, a job mm -hmm. in a country uh, that is not your home country. You know, so that's. Um, that's you know something that I've been aiming to do as well. So it's uh it's it's an interesting process to go through. So yeah, uh, very inspirational in that sense. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I definitely don't think I would have done anything like this had I stayed in Glasgow. And I I, I don't know what it is. I think it's I don't think it's necessarily being in obviously it's me being in Japan but I think just moving away from your home city I think just does something to your brain yeah <laughs> I, I completely agree with you I mean there, there are things that I've done here that I, I could not have imagined doing back home you know yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think it's the the sense of um, the adventurous spirit that brings with completely uprooting and moving to a different country 
Yeah, I definitely think that's a big part of it for sure. Um, I think there's that and also the kind of forced situation as well, you know, you're like um, you're somewhere that's not your home and you're in this position where you just you kind of have to make something work and you have right. to do something and so your mind just goes kind of a bit crazy and overthinking and things like that and so you think of things that you might not have before yeah yeah that uh, that monkey mind that we all have just sort of you know when that uh, survival instinct kicks in you're just like all right do this you know and yeah. it, it life has a way of, of, of making that stuff work you know at least I yeah. found, and it seems like you found that too. Um, now, how long have you actually been doing this? Like from the from the moment you create, you said you created the website with the tin uh, boxes to yeah. to now. Um, I think it's been about a year, a, a coming up for coming up for almost two years now. Wow. Okay. And in you've you've gained a hundred subscribers. So, yeah. and that's 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 pretty good yeah yeah it's about um eight boxes so it's four boxes per year okay. and so, yeah it's through that um and yeah i sometimes um like i was saying before i really you know i wish i could focus on it more because um um every time i do like for example when i post something up on instagram i normally get either not just like the followers and stuff but i'll normally get people visiting the website mm -hmm. or like making a purchase without doing that much I haven't posted anything for ages and I've just been a bit just not been that focused on it and um, I it's but it's good to know that even just something like that can help grow the business so it's motivation for me to kind of take it further and, and focus a bit more so that's kind of in my plan for the next few months right right yeah that's that's actually what I was gonna ask next is where, where do you see yourself going with it um, what in, in the future, do you hope that that takes over what you're doing now, or would I, you still like to just keep it as a hobby, or what? I, I would like this to be my full time job. I would like the the stationery box to be my full time job. Um, my plan for the new year is I want to open up a standalone shop. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, like a physical store. No, actually, that's the oh, wrong, uh, totally the wrong description okay. there. No, I, didn't, okay. I, didn't, I said the wrong word. It's not. <laughs> I made it sound like that, but that's not what I meant. Yeah. I mean, like um, another online shop or, okay. or part of the same kind of website, but basically uh, where you can buy um, the individual products. So if you really liked a certain item from a box, you can buy that on its own. You don't have to subscribe to a full box. You can just pick and choose pieces and things like that. I see. Yeah, yeah. And um, I would like to do a bit more. I, I kind of do this already, like unofficially, where people will message me and say, I've got like my nephew's birthday coming up. He really likes dinosaurs and spaceships and he loves pens and papers and stuff. Can you customize something? And I, I do that already for, for like friends. So I'm probably going to offer that as a service as well at some okay. point in a customized box mm -hmm. and kind of uh, individual items online and, um, and, well, that's it for now. <laughs> right. Well, hey, that's that's good. You you have uh, some aspirations, and yeah, I I, I totally assumed it was a uh, the standalone uh, shop. Yeah. Well, well, just judging by the the phrase there, but um, yeah. now you said you started off just by creating the website and then throwing the ten ten boxes up there. Mm -hmm. um, what website did you go with? Like WordPress or or what what sort of um, how did you initially just say like okay this is what I'm gonna do this in this is the website I'm gonna do it on yeah um, I um, uh, created a Squarespace website Squarespace, so Squarespace okay Squarespace, yeah mm -hmm. because they do um, re uh, they do they have a good uh, system for retail uh, on there as well like e-commerce mm -hmm. so um, in fact that's how originally I uh, ended up making everything go through my UK account as well because Squarespace only offer that like you can't do Japanese yen on it you have to do like pounds or dollars or there are a few other countries on there but yeah. it was just yeah that's how that started that, that's how I ended up doing uh, using Squarespace as well okay that, that, that's that's actually good to know because I, I wasn't aware of that I, I've considered using Squarespace in the past and I, I never really looked into it until until recently so 
it's definitely I mean I, I like to um, I, I do a bit of customizing on it as well so there's a, a although it's like drag and drop and really easy to use it's also really easy to kind of um, uh, add some code and things like that in there as well so I kind of self-taught myself like a little bit of basic kind of HTML all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so I can customize it a little bit more um, which makes it just a bit more nicer but it's also already nice the way it is I think right. um, I really like the, the platform um, Shopify is also Shopify is good so if you ever ever wanted to do like you had to wanted to link a Japanese bank account they have that support here but Squarespace doesn't so okay okay so yeah. you, you you kind of do a combination of Squarespace and Shopify then to um, to to sell the boxes or they sell the subscriptions right Mm -hmm, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, great. That's a uh, that's that's really good advice too for people who are interested in starting online online businesses. So, um, getting away from the work aspect, so your day to day life. What do you enjoy doing for fun? Uh, uh, you live you live in Tokyo, so there's probably always something to do, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I usually um. Uh, I think I go through uh, peaks and troughs, so uh, sometimes I'll be out all the time mm -hmm. uh, where I'll be really in the mood to kind of uh, socialize and meet up with friends and go out drinking, and, um, but then there's times where I just can't be bothered leaving my area for, for weeks on end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I usually, I guess one of the things I do a lot consistently, and um, I guess because it's so easy to do here, is I eat, eat, I eat out a lot. So one of the things that stopped happening when I came here was I stopped cooking so much because I just enjoyed eating out all the time. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah, I've, it, it's actually been opposite for me. I, I do enjoy eating out in Japan. It's, um, you can definitely find some really nice spots to with some good food and mm -hmm. I'd, I'd assume in Tokyo there's just a plethora of places to go and, and, and eat but I've found that I end up cooking more these days just because I, I guess maybe it's the city I live in you know <laughs> I, I live in a much smaller city so mm -hmm. it's um, you, you've been to all the spots at least once and you're like eh I'll just stay in tonight yeah. <laughs> um especially kind of around where I live in Sugamo and um, Ots I, I work in Otsuka which is just one station along before one before Ikebukuro mm -hmm. and there's so many around this area there's so many good like food like a lot of good restaurants and um, they're just on my doorstep and I just kind of I'll, uh, I visit them all regularly to the point where sometimes some people actually recite my order for me, oh, uh, yeah. the the stuff, and I'm like, oh, I come here maybe a bit too often. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I do en en enjoy that, and and I'm going to other parts of Tokyo as well. I've got a lot of friends that um, enjoy doing the same thing, and so we're always wanting to try new places together and things like that. So it's always really nice. Oh, great, great. Yeah, um, I'm sure if I lived there, I'd probably be doing the same you know because I, I do enjoy good food um it, it's funny another friend of mine who who lives in in tokyo he he lives very close to some restaurants just as you said and um, he's been there for a few months and he said the the staff already know exactly what he's going to order so yeah, it really makes you feel like you've settled in, uh, and yeah. that you're even four years in. I'm still. I always like. I always like these little signs of like, oh yeah, I live here now. This is great, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, have you traveled at all within Japan? Yeah, because when I worked for the travel startup, they were sending me to lots of the various places to write about them as well. Right. Right. And and I've been quite lucky in that because I've always had my hand in travel, the travel industry. Even now, um, I work with um, a company to do, uh, like they're related to the uh, Japan National Tourism Organization. So okay. I still do trips every now and again. Um, so I've been to, yeah I've been to, <laughs> yeah, I've been to Utsunomiya and Tochigi oh. and all these places. Um, Great. Nagasaki what? and, yeah been to quite a few places I, I still want to go to uh, I went to Okinawa for the first time this year which was lovely um, oh, man, but yeah. I still 
to go to Hokkaido. That's like my next on my list. That's where I really want to go. Yeah, yeah, Hokkaido's. Um, I don't know. I was I was going to say avoid winter time, but the snow festival would be a great time to go. I think. Yeah, um, it would be. I keep seeing photos of it and thinking I'd like to go, but then I remember how much I hate the cold. So. <laughs> well, you're from a you're from a cold cold I know, country, though. But that's why I left. <laughs> right. Oh, how how do you fare against the summers here then? Because they they have to be completely different than summers from where you're from. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think this summer particularly was. I feel like it's still going on. <laughs> yeah, it, it, no, summer part two is still rearing its head here, and it, which is strange. This, um, yeah, it's 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 very very typical Japanese conversation about oh the the weather's <laughs> crazy this year, isn't it? But yeah, yeah it, but it's true. This has been a strange strange year for weather in this country. Uh, the summer was extremely hot. Um, yeah. There were a lot of people who who died from just heat stroke here. So that's right. Mm -hmm. I um I don't think I've ever I mean I have so many people say the same thing they don't think they've experienced this kind of heat before it's the humidity it's the humidity that's the killer it's just so um yeah I I remember I think just a few weeks ago I said to a friend of mine I was like I think I I don't think I like this at all I don't mm -hmm. like this heat at all and if anyone from home could hear me say that they would be shocked because I was always the cold one in, in Glasgow I was always the one that was even summer like all year round just always with my shawl and blanket and even in the office that's what they knew me for mm -hmm. <laughs> whereas here it's been the total total opposite <laughs> right right yeah it's, it's definitely an adjustment um I, I've had to adjust the opposite way. The summers are, I'm used to hot summers from from where I'm from, but the winters, uh, we don't usually get as much snow as, as uh, it usually snows at least once a year up here in Utsunomiya. Um, but there was a, it was about four years ago, people called the uh, snowpocalypse, and even Tokyo had a lot of snow. Were you here during that winter, or was this before you came? Um, I I think the first time I've seen snow in Tokyo was earlier this year, or there okay. was maybe a little bit a couple of years ago, but it wasn't ever, it wasn't anything, yeah. it wasn't snow apocalypse. <laughs> uh, it must have been the, the winter before you came then, because it, it, it they said it was the worst snow that Tokyo had seen in 50 years or so, and it, it was it was bad, it, it was bad all the way down in Tokyo, and it, it, it had shut down most of the city here for at least three days so wow. yeah it was it was pretty bad but we get where we get a snow at least once a year here though oh okay yeah and um, where in america are you from oh sorry i'm from texas ah okay yeah so hot summers um winters are probably mild compared to uh, -huh. uh what you're used to but well, I think one of the things that I really miss, um, when people always ask me what I miss from home, like aside from people and family and all that kind of thing, um, I definitely think the long summer days is something that I really, I, I didn't think about it until my second year here. And I thought, I really miss the long summer days. Yeah. Like here, I feel somebody literally just goes and switches the light off at seven o'clock or six right. thirty or something. And it's like, what happened? Yeah. The At least the summers in Texas, you know, this the sun can be out until you know 8 30 p.m and then it's still setting so even as late as 9 p.m it's yeah. still somewhat residual light but here yeah you're right it's seven o'clock click it's off but yeah. then again the the sun rises so early here i'm i was definitely not used to seeing sunlight at four in the morning so <laughs> when i first came here in Glasgow or in in Scotland, the sun, uh, you know, the sun, it'll still be daylight sometimes at ten, eleven o'clock at night. Right. It's really strange. Because <laughs> the the uh, latitude, right? It's you're yeah, exactly. so far north. Yeah. But then you get the flip side of that in winter, where it's just constantly dark. So I guess I do appreciate that here. I really love like the crisp some the kind of December weather here. It's really lovely. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Um, it the winters are are a bit dry here, but um, it, it's it's so weird that the summers are extremely humid, but the winters are 
really dry, you know. It's so. too extreme, isn't it? I remember my first uh, first winter here was yeah the, the December when I when I wasn't feeling so great. I remember touching my forehead and it was like a paper bag, and I thought, what is that? I've never felt my skin like that before. It was horrible, hmm. and it was just because I didn't I didn't know how to. I didn't you know wasn't using like. Uh, the right moisturizer or something right. I didn't I just wasn't I just didn't expect it and I had to like change and kind of figure out what kind of skincare I needed to use to kind of keep that stuff soft <laughs> now now you you've traveled all over Japan uh, you've been to Nikko right up, up here in, yeah um, have you ever been in the fall in the autumn season no, I would have loved to have come in the fall. That sounds lovely. Um, yeah, right now, especially the um, the autumn leaves in Nico are are at their peak, and I've oh, I've no. been once in in the ten years that I've lived here. I've only been to Nico in the fall once, and uh, it's it's truly breathtaking. Um, I'm I'm not used to seeing colors of the, like that, and it was it was definitely a treat. So it was it was amazing. That's um, one of my favorite times of year, and that's what I'm waiting for now. So I'm like, where are the where are the autumn leaves? Why are they not here yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's especially warm this this year. Um, leaves that are usually yellow and and fallen by now are still somewhat green and on the trees, you know. So I'm I'm like you. I'm like, hurry up, bring it on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, um, where has been your favorite? place that you've visited either for work or just for leisure um probably um well i guess i mean i'm going to leave okinawa out of it because i feel like okinawa is really i mean it was beautiful it was amazing and i would probably choose okinawa but also i feel like it's um um cliche yeah yeah <laughs> um but there's a reason why it's cl a cliche though you know it, it, yeah. it is a beautiful place so. it is yeah. it is it's like uh it's so so lovely I, I really can't i hope i get to go back there as well i think i'm going to try and make an effort to go back um um i really liked um i, I really like nagasaki and um like beppu and that kind of area i really enjoyed it there okay yeah it's in the uh, kyushu right yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah, I've um, I've never been out that way. I've, I've only stayed. I've actually only traveled within Honshu, the main island. Uh, so I st still have yet to go to Kyushu, Okinawa, Hokkaido, or Shikoku. So I I still need to travel to those spots. But for me, one of the most amazing places I have traveled to has been Aomori Prefecture in the summer. Um, are you familiar with the f famous festivals up there in the summertime? Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, I haven't been, but I've heard, I've heard yeah. of uh, yeah, the festivals. Yeah, it's uh, Nebuta in Aomori City. I believe it's Nebuta. Um, the, the floats are amazing to watch there at night. And then in a nearby city, Hirosaki, the Nebuta festival the very next day is very... It's a similar festival, but the 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 feeling of it is completely different like Nebuta is very colorful and very bright and very um, festive Nebuta is, is almost a dark sort of almost uh, in some of the floats a very violent imagery so it's 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 really contrast in styles but they're both amazing to see in person so that's uh, I would rec definitely recommend visit watching that as well oh nice yeah that sounds great. I'm gonna add it to the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, um, couple, you, um, you've, you've given a lot of great information for for everybody. Um, it's very inspirational, especially if, for those who are interested in starting their own own business. Um, please tell us where we can find your your website, and uh, so people can can buy some boxes off of there. Some subs, some sc subscriptions. Um, yeah. yeah, so the website is uh, mybungobox.com and bungu is B-U-N-G-U, mybungobox.com. And then you can also find me on like Instagram and Twitter uh, at mybungobox. Great, great. So and 
my personal Instagram, if you like, is just at Cuv, K-U-V. Um, I just post a lot of uh, travel photos and like kind of stuff around Tokyo and, and there as well. Great, great. I'll have all of that in the uh, description for, for everyone. Um, and is there anything you'd like to say to people who are thinking about coming to Japan or just um, any words of wisdom that you've you've enjoyed throughout your life? Um, yeah, I think um, I think if you if you want to if you want to live overseas and you want to live in Japan, um, yeah, don't don't lose hope because it can happen. <laughs> in some for some way, you can definitely make it work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also think that while you're here, and it's something that I think I did a, it took me a couple of years to get used to. And I, I mentioned earlier that I love to eat out a lot, but actually um, that took me a while to kind of go to places myself because I was always really self-conscious about going into small ramen shops or things like that that were filled with salary men. I felt so intimidated by it. <laughs> I would look in the window and then I would sometimes just run away because I think, oh, I really want to eat in there, but I don't want to make a fool out of myself or I don't want to like everyone to look at me or I don't know. I was just really self-conscious about it or if I didn't understand the menu. But slowly, slowly, I started just ignoring all that and going in and just pointing, doing like the pointing thing and just picking whatever and being a bit more adventurous. And it was only then that I think I really, really started to enjoy enjoy um, my life here more. So I would say that definitely, um, yeah, take risks when you're here and just, uh, yeah, be a bit more adventurous. Great. Be, expect to be a bit more adventurous when you're here. Yeah, that's that's awesome advice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Well, thank you, Kabul, very much for coming on. Um, it was very interesting talking to you, and uh, I'll be sure to point people in your direction. So thank you, thank you very much, and uh, I hope to talk to you again someday. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Jay. Yeah. Bye.